Hi, welcome to The Root Cellar at the Wardenburg Family Farm with Dawn and Brenda. I am down in my beautiful, wonderful 180-year-old root cellar. And um, it's about the beginning of March, I came down to get a few things, and I realized some of you may not have seen our journey of how we turned this room from this into this. It was quite a process. Cold cellar is six steps down lower than the basement, and the basement is built with natural uh, stone walls or limestone. But come on down the steps, let's see what we have. Uh, of note here, if you can see the, the giant limestone slabs that go across, there's three of them, but that basically holds the weight of the foundation. These are amazing stones here. If you look, it's a brick arch. It's beautifully done and it's in really good shape. A few places may need a, a patchwork a little, but I noticed right away we have these uh, iron hooks and I suspect these were used to hang meats um, over the winter. Up in the top of the arch at the end, you can see there's a few bricks that are missing and um, that would have been part of a ventilation setup. So I have to think about the ventilation, uh, the cold air, coming in and the hot air going out. Over in the corner here, if you look closely, you can see the stone. That is actually, you know, bedrock stone. It's in the ground, so they just integrated that into the wall. And down on the floor, it is a dirt floor, which is really good for a cold cellar. So we're not going to put anything on top of the floor. All I'm going to do is, is start by cleaning out here. And I think I'm going to build shelves on both sides. But the shelves, I think that we are going to build, um, we want them to be away from the wall a little bit and not have a back to the shelf. I think the, the ventilation and air movement is really important in a cold cellar. So a lot of work to do, but just wanted to show you the beginning of this. And the very first part of the project is going to be Donnie's project alone. That, that seems like there's too many spiders in that for me. <laughs> so once he has the spiders out here, I'll start helping him. Well, the first job was for Donnie to do the cleaning. Remember, I have a little problem with spiders. So he cleaned up all the trash and boards and stuff that the previous owners had probably had down there for years. And when I went down there, I didn't see a single spider. I didn't see any cleaning it up either. Well, I'm happy. That's all that counts. To begin the shelving project, we went to the sawmill in the forest to get two inch pine planks got 10 inch widths on one side and 20 inch on the other. We wanted to accommodate different size baskets and storage boxes. We used heavy concrete blocks in between the shelves to give strength and also so we didn't have to drill into the wall or have a back to the shelves, remembering that we wanted good circular ventilation in the room. And that day, fortunately, I had help from my grandson, Tice. Not only are the shelves strong, but I think they're attractive. I think they're really attractive too. And as soon as we got the shelves ready, I started storing some food down there. I need to put a door on here. Um, part of the reason is the difference in the humidity levels. We want to have this more humid down here than up in the larder area. So often we can keep this down to about 90% humidity and then it's in the 50s or 60 up here in, in the larder. But I need a door here and then I'm also going to have pipe in some air from the outside so we can get it colder than it's been around 55, 58. I think we'd like to get it closer to 45, 45 to 50. So it might leave, need a little bit of ventilation. All right, we have the door frame in. It looks pretty solid and you know, what are the chances that a, an old 180 year old brick and stone is perfectly square? Yeah, no. So now I have to shim the frame up. Now I'll put a little trim around it, but it seems like the door is working okay. And now I just have to do some shim work 
Okay, we have the door frame in and I shimmed up the uh, inner frame. It needs a little bit of trim around the outside, but we're going to test to see if we have a good solid door. Oh, I love that squeak. It's got an old squeak for an old door. Perfect. Solid, good close. Now I got to put a latch on the outside here. And then the big thing is, uh, do we paint the door? This is an original door to the farm. Do we leave it just as it is, or do we paint it red, dark red, like most of the other doors here? So I don't know. It's so dark in that tunnel. I almost feel like we need something bright. We'll have to see. Yeah. Think well, about that one. Okay. Well, good job, dear. Thank you. So to begin the lighting project, we experimented with different types of lighting, with direct and indirect lighting. We had temporary extension cords. We decided we would go with indirect lighting. So I tied a line into the basement circuit, lighting circuit, and I ran a conduit, which you can see on the left side of the stairs going down underground. And we used underground rated wire and put them in the conduit. So inside the room, we used LED light fixtures. These are up lights or directional lights. So some of them shined up on the wall and some on the wall. I think it came out with a, a beautiful effect that highlighted the features of the stone and the brick and gave a beautiful soft light down onto the baskets and, and the food. Now that the project is finished, we're constantly monitoring the temperature and humidity in the root cellar. What we found is the humidity is even higher now that the air does not mix with the basement. So we're in, typically in the high 90s in humidity and the temperatures range from about 50 degrees up to 55 degrees. So we're pretty happy with that. We, we would love to have it maybe another 5 degrees cooler. So isn't this cool? This is a cool root cellar. I mean, when we first bought this house, I was so excited to have a root cellar. And we couldn't wait to clean it up and get it all ready to go and put the shelving in and get it perfect. And it looks so nice. But as I said in the last video, we don't do master plans. <laughs> and this time we probably should have. We yeah. should have planned ahead for a few things. We got the cart ahead of the horse. Very much so. <laughs> okay, the first problem is the root cellar here is not cold enough. We wanted it ideally to be between 40 degrees and 50 degrees. And right now the temperature in here is 52 degrees. And that's probably about the lowest it's been. Yeah, because we're end of January. Now, up in the larder right now it's 55. And that's okay, that meets our new plan that we have. But this needs to be 10 degrees colder. All right, so we told you the number one problem in the root cellar is it's not cold enough. The number two problem is a little more complicated and more serious. We have a radon issue. So we hired a remediation contractor. They come in, they will saw holes in the floor and put PVC pipe with fans so they can put a negative pressure under the slab and draw out any uh, radon that might be coming up through the soil to your home. Now that did provide some relief for uh, our larder, Harry. Which, and the rest of the house. Yes. So we have it down to about 10 to 12 in our larder. It's still not good enough. But we don't spend that much time down here, so we're not that concerned. And we're not done. The mm -hmm. real problem, we need to find the source of the uh, radon, and that is coming from our root cellar. My pretty root cellar. So again, remembering the number of four, the measure in our root cellar was over 200. So it'd be very dangerous to spend a lot of time down in the root cellar. Yeah. Okay, I've never done this before, so I did some reading, got a few ideas, so I decided to buy some four inch PVC pipe, uh, enough to go a one line in and one line out. And I bought a fan and, and trying to get a control system so that I can um, remove 
the heavy air that's at the bottom, which is the radon in it, push it outside and then let the ambient air from the outside come in through the other pipe and it'll also flow in from under the door. Again, remembering that that radon gas is seven and a half times heavier. So I'm going to have both of them terminate at the floor level. Okay, now we begin the construction part of the project. I'm working with four inch PVC pipe. It's schedule 20 pipe, which is the lightest pipe that they have. It's a little less expensive. Uh, the troubling part is I have to put this pipe outside of these stone walls. It's going to go all the way up and outside through the stone to the exterior. And then it needs to go all the way down through the basement, down into the cold cellar. There'll be two lines. One of them will be powered and one of them will be a natural flow return line. Um, I have a lot of work ahead of me because this has to be dug into the ground to go under the door and to be placed properly in the room. And I guess the most disappointing part is that these pipes are visible and it's such a cool looking root cellar. I'm going to have to do something creative to, to cover these pipes. I'm not sure what it is yet. I'm anxious to see what happens at the end. Uh, stick around to see where this goes. Okay, folks, we made a lot of progress on this project. You can see the pipes behind us, and I gotta tell you, I'm feeling a lot better about the outcome and the possibility. We got a great fan to go inside the uh, four inch pipes, and more important than that, I've got a control unit. So, looking forward to see how that goes. I'm anxious to see how it goes, too. <laughs> the hard part coming up next is up there, we have to break through the 20 inch wall to, to terminate both of these lines. Break through a 180 year old stone wall. I have to jack up part of the, the, uh, the floor in here. So. so today we're gonna break through the wall and then we're gonna put a powered fan on and we're gonna try to cover up these pipes and it's all gonna be good at the end, we hope. Okay, here's where we're gonna break through the wall. Fortunately, we're not breaking through the whole wall. Right here, there was an iron grate they took the grate out years ago and they attempted to backfill and, and put some stone in, but it looks cracked up and broken and I'm naively hoping that it breaks out easily and, and then we can uh, proceed. So right now I'm just going to pull out some insulation and I think like, oh, uh-oh. There's the grate. The grate's still there. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to have to cut through that. But I also have another problem. This is a major beam right here that holds up the kitchen floor and it rests on the stone wall. So <coughs> I'm gonna have to put a jack in here to hold it up before I rip out the rest of this wall. So let's go ahead and put the jack in first. Does that make sense? That sounds like a good idea. All right, now we've got the, uh, the beam jacked up. It's okay to start ripping out. It's, this looks a little suspicious in here. Oh Lord! Well it's good we have the beam jacked up. Okay, we just finished uh, putting the inline blower in. We plugged it in and got it turned on, and now I'm anxious to do some testing. Okay, so I recalibrated the device. I'm just gonna leave it on the shelf, and we'll monitor it every 12 hours. You can probably hear the fan blowing in here, mostly because of the noise. Like right here is the intake. So pulling the air in on the opposite side is the natural um, flow back. So 
really anxious to see what happens over the next two days. So now the hard work isn't quite over yet. He still has to find a way to cover up all those ugly pipes. So I'm doing that? <laughs> yes. Well, we're doing it. I'll tell you how to do it and you'll do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and close in the hole with a lot of pretty rocks. Yeah. So, now so I think next we need up. to go to the barn to rip out some wood so that we can uh, cover up these pipes. Luckily, we have a barn with a floor that needs torn out and replaced. So we have a lot of barn wood to use. <laughs> all right, this is the section of the barn floor that we're going to remove. So it's a 140 year old pine and we'll use that to box in some of the pipes in the basement. So I'm going to kind of pry some up over here and see what happens. Donald? <laughs> that we're going to uh, whitewash it. And many of you have given us those suggestions over the years, um, and it's the right thing to do. So it's going to give us protection um, for just cleanliness and antibacterial protection and also prevent uh, molds and other things from growing. All right, the got about a quart, quart and a half mixed up. We're going to get painting here, or applying, I should say, the lime wash. I've never done it before, but I've uh, heard that uh, you put the coat on, it's kind of translucent, and over the next day or so, it'll begin to whiten up a little. Now, it's going to need at least three coats, maybe four coats. So, let's, uh, let's see what happens here. Okay, it's the first day this morning, what, about 10 o'clock or so, we put the first application of lime wash on, and now it's around dinner time, six o'clock, and boom, look at it, it's still not even dry, and look how white, how bright it is already. It's uh, made a huge difference, and, uh, and this is only one, only one coat, and um, it's still not completely dry. You know, and, um, so we're gonna wait till tomorrow and put a second coat on. Um, I'm just really encouraged, though, very encouraged. Okay, we completed two coats on the the root cellar here, and it's making an amazing difference. Not only does it look lighter and cleaner, but if you remember in the beginning when we started to apply the whitewash sand, mortar, everything was falling down. Now with the coats on there, it's soaked into that uh, mortar and it's tight now. So we're not gonna get the dust that we had before or any, I think it's gonna slow down any deterioration in this 180 year old root cellar. So very encouraged. We're gonna do one more coat. Now we did day one and day two, we skipped a day to let it to calcify and harden because it's near 100% humidity here. But now it's really solid. I think it's ready for day three. So this is hard work, by the way. The first coat is absolutely the hardest. The second coat is a little easier. We're hoping that the third coat is just a piece of cake. Well, the third coat is finally done. <laughs> And it might have been easier, but it was definitely not a piece of cake. But it looks great, though, doesn't it? It looks amazing. It's bright, cheery almost. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. And um, it looks clean. It is clean, and it's going to help with uh, prevention of mold. And the biggest surprise to me, though, is how it changed the mortar on the wall. And it tightened it all up, and it's secure. And we no longer have bits of mortar falling down and the dust. So... Clean in every way. Yeah, no crumbs falling off if you accidentally touch the wall. Yeah, so was it worth it? It was worth it. All right. I was in a hurry to get it done just because I have food. I'm excited to put it down here and actually use my root cellar for the first time in four years.
Well, it's been a three-year journey working on our root cellar. And it's cold in here, isn't it? Yeah, it works. It's cold. <laughs> so today, is, it's in March of 2024, and we started in January of 2021. 20, 21. We bought the farmhouse in 2019. Yeah. It took us this long to get it to this point. Now, we did finish it last fall, so mm -hmm. this last winter was really our test period to see how it went. And you can see we still have produce in here. I had carrots, beets potatoes and spaghetti squash yeah and, and everything you do? everything did great yeah they really did i mean i'm i'm pleasantly surprised so this this coming fall i will be ready to stock up in here so bottom line we met our goal as far as temperature you remember before we did the root cellar it was about 55 degrees in here even in january the coldest and now with all the changes we made it's down to 45 degrees 40 would have been fantastic yeah. but our goal was 45 and we hit our goal mm -hmm. We just made a point, anytime it was really cold at night, we ran the blower for longer periods of time yeah. to put a lot of cold air down here. So what we learned is the root cellar is great, but we still have a transition period in the fall. When our produce comes out, the root cellar is still 55 degrees, so it's not really ideal. So we've learned that if we power it, and I have a, mm -hmm. uh, an electric blower, we, we blow in the one vent and then we use the powered vent that we have, uh, the blower built into it and between the two of them it cools the rocks down and it makes it mm -hmm. and i also closer. learned from reading when you pick the produce put it in the refrigerator for a day or two bring the temperature of the produce down yeah. before you put it down here otherwise you're putting a lot of 70 degree food into this room and it might warm it up i think we also learned that we have to time our produce better yes. to push it back to it's ready to go and be yeah. harvested when it's cooler mm -hmm. and that'll be less Push pressure. Push back the carrots and the beets till, so I'm picking them as late in the fall as I can and the squash all that stuff. Yeah so the other objective we had was reducing our rate on it. You remember uh, it was over 200 pico curies per liter and now we test it through the winter it's anywhere from 10 to 15 so it's a 90 95 percent reduction mm -hmm. so we're pretty happy with that. Yeah extremely happy. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm just so thrilled to finally have a fully functioning root cellar in yeah. my farmhouse. So going forward, we just have to learn when and where to put the produce in the root cellar, which mm -hmm. is colder and damper, you know, 45 degrees, 100% humidity, versus we have the larder, which is going to be drier, about 50 to 55, mm -hmm. and also about 50 to 55 in humidity. So it gives us two options. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's a perfect place for everything. And I got to really make sure I learn what is best for every pro kind of produce. Yeah. So thank you for joining us on this journey. And we look forward to reporting out more on our experiences in using this root cellar. Yeah, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.